And now we're going to turn to Capitol Hill, where today House Republicans voted along party lines to repeal Obamacare. What? I know you're shocked. Now, the repeal vote, it comes as Supreme Court justices weigh in on a move that could pull subsidies and health coverage for millions of Americans. The president has said that the effort to wipe out the law, and his words here, makes absolutely no sense. The law it has voted, been voted on more than 50 times in the past couple of years to repeal the law, and you know how that's turned out every single time. Well, today, Senate Democrats blocked action on legislation that provides funding for the Homeland Security Department and rolls back the president's steps to shield millions of undocumented workers from deportation. Both efforts likely to end in defeat for the GOP. That is, the president has said he will use his veto powers if necessary. Okay, to that end, guys, and Richard, I'll start with you. I get it. Republicans overall don't like Obamacare. Republicans overall don't like the president, especially the methodology he went through as related to immigration reform. But if they want to win, if they want to be in the office where the president is right now, how is it smart politics to say, okay, we got the House and we got the Senate, so we got to tell people between now and 2016, you put us in power, we get stuff done that they're spending more time on Benghazi, they're spending more time on repealing Obamacare, which will go nowhere. And now they're seen as the people who are trying to fight immigration reform when they need to get Latino votes. I just don't, from a strategy standpoint, get that this is the best way to do it and then threaten to shut down the government and, and, or defund, uh, you know, basically uh, Homeland Security in the process over immigration. Uh, the Democrats, I think, boxed them in, but I think they're playing into Democrats' hands. Why am I wrong? Well, it's not that you're wrong, but here, here, let's look at it. All politics are local, like Tip O'Neill said. The majority of congressional districts are congressional districts which are top-heavy with Republicans. And the only thing you're likely to face is a more conservative Republican in that district. That's how 99% of the districts are. And so when you talk about Obamacare, that's not very popular in each of these Republican districts. So they can afford to have this vote and not have anything happen to them. But haven't they proven the point already? They've done it 50 times. The 51st time is not no, going to make a difference. No, my point is to represent my constituency. My constituency doesn't think this is a Even very good idea. Even if you know it's going to go nowhere. Doesn't matter. But now what is, what's important is that the next nominee for the Republican, uh, for Republican presidential candidate makes the case that I, will work, I can work with everybody. Maybe with Obamacare, we'll take what's good and we'll get rid of what's bad. Wait a minute, we, everyone agrees that there needs to be, even uh, Republicans agree that there needs to be immigration reform that also increases uh, our border security. It's just a way, a matter of how to get there. So I don't but think how that- how about how they're going there, specifically? Homeland Security funding, holding that hostage in the process? Well, not, I think that's just a political process and it will work its way out. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not concerned that it will affect a Republican uh, presidential nominee. You don't think nominee. the optics sound terrible? Well, yep. Sure, but not, not again, a Republican Look presidential nominee will stand <clears throat> on their own platform, and I don't think what's happened in to Congress get to be the nominee, you it will s- affect them. you got to s- uh, placate those very same forces. Mm-hmm. Look, back, well, back to vaccinations. It's not whether yep. you're right or wrong. It's whether you're playing to the base or, mm-hmm. as Hillary's doing, playing to the general population. You guys are in big trouble. No, I doubt it. we got some I big contenders. Out there, uh, you know, Scott Walker, Jeb Bush, for example, or, or some of my favorites. I think in the heart, in the heart of fun. hearts, any realistic presidential candidate didn't didn't really want these steps that are taken. But the lawmakers have to go on record as voting. We're trying to do something about immigration. I, if you if you can get a message, stop with the Obamacare stuff. Fifty six times. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have me convinced after fifty four. I, I agree that it's not going to go not, anywhere. Right. Well, so stop. Well, let's but look at the numbers where we are now. And I know it's dangerous in early uh, twenty fifteen to do this, but. We do have uh, some data, at least in some some snap polls for the White House. Former Secretary of State, and she's running, uh, Democratic uh, likely nominee Hillary Clinton. She's leading in the three swing states here that they took the look at. That's according to a Q poll out today. It shows that she's got leads over every uh, uh, hypothetical GOP challenger in Florida, Pennsylvania, and Ohio. And while Clinton is holding her own right now, the GOP is getting a big election boost, though, from the Koch brothers. Uh, and Richard, to that end, these guys are going to write a check when it's all said and done, closer to a billion bucks here. Mm-hmm. I get what they're trying to do. Um, if I had money to burn and you wanted to do it, this is probably the right way to do it. You kind of vet the field early so you don't have the, the food fight here um, that dragged on far too long into a primary process the last go round. But are you worried? Basically, you got a couple guys that are going to pick the nominee. Uh, I don't think, look, 
The Koch brothers oh, spent. Come on. They spent four hundred million dollars in, in the last, uh, you know, uh, election, midterm election, which was just recently, and they didn't get much of a re result. Maybe they're going to double their result of nothingness from what they got last time by spending twice as much. But I'm not really concerned about buying an election. It's just not. It's not going to happen. Leasing, um, renting, renting, <laughs> buying, whatever. Contracting an election. I'm not really concerned about that, uh, especially in, in, in presidential politics. The truth of the matter is, presidential uh, uh, races are very expensive to run. You know, you're talking about between the last two candidates, you know, two, over $2 billion. I get it, but I've never seen, have you guys ever seen two guys basically being able to. Look, you know, you look gotta, what came out of it. They said Rand Paul, we didn't like him because he wore jeans and, uh, uh, you know, he didn't wear a suit to the things so we're not taking him seriously. And there's real panic right now in Rand Paul world, right? Not about the vaccine comments, but about how the Cokes are going to view him if they'll fund him or not. I don't think this is healthy. The, the, the Republican Party is caught with a set of wacky ideas, fairly interesting candidates, and a wacky base. <laughs> and he, he keeps talking about the, the sort of interesting and, and, and thoughtful candidates. I don't see you nodding candidates. along. Yeah. <laughs> but but the know. base is wacky and the ideas are wacky. Austerity, it doesn't work. Global warming, Republicans want something done about it. Vaccines, stop all. Well, you know I, what? You know what? We, we can't be so far off. I tell you what, keep we going. Dom we dominate the House and we dominate the Senate, and that, that's elected by the by the, the people in the U.S., which is right of center. Most Stay Americans are right of center. Tuned. So we must be doing something right. Stay tuned. And, I, and I guarantee in 2016 we'll have the presidency. Two too. guys, a billion bucks, setting basically the terms of the debate here. Um, do you just say, hey, it's inevitable? It just doesn't no feel well, right. Well, it, it was inevitable that we're going to get to this day. But you know what it is, Richard. You know I'm a straight shooter. I call it what it is. They're buying the politicians. Politicians have been bought for years. Look at gun control. I'm sorry, Richard. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. Money impacts the way that elections are. <laughs> how, how should I say it? I was, I was trying to get to the chase. I've been doing this for 30 years. Politicians are bought. One thing, that they, whether you're a Democrat, Republican, or Independent, you got the money, they will listen. It's that simple, except for Richard Brodsky. Except he, for Brodsky. He won't listen. He won't listen. <laughs> As I said before. Bushwa. 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 House of Cards right. is coming up. Now, right? If you think you've had a tough day, um, it probably isn't as bad as the last couple of days for one Chris Christie. And a lot of people are asking, is his 2016 campaign dead before it even starts? Dominic said, I already poured dirt on it. We're going to ask the table about that after this.